Hello everyone, and welcome back for the second part of the Nakamura vs. Ferusha video. I had some technical problems for the first part, so I'm putting the second part here, which may actually be a bit of a happy accident, because now we can have this whole video just for the really beautiful combination. You know, none of this, you know, deep opening stuff or detailed Grandmaster analysis. Now we're just getting to the highlight reel. So here we go. Now, if you saw my previous video with the Nakamura Ferocious Scandinavian, well, I have set this position as a puzzle, and you had some time to think about what move you would play before coming here. But in case this is the first Nakamura Ferocious video of mine you've seen, well, this is your chance to pause the video and think about what you would play as white, in case you haven't already come to a decision. So, I'll give you a few moments to find that pause button. Okay, what move did you decide on as white? Well, it turns out there are actually two solutions here. And the second solution is to play knight takes e7. I mean, it makes sense to look at the checks and captures first, since they're the most forcing moves, ones that most limit the opponent's options. And after queen e7, Congratulations if you came up with knight takes f7. We use the pin on the rook versus the queen to eliminate the defense of the bishop on e6. And black just doesn't have a safe way to take back. Where if rook f7 then, well even rook e6 is perhaps even stronger than bishop takes e6. And well it's clear that this pin is going to be unleashed on the next move. And that black will be completely lost then. I mean, if you try to take some other way, well, queen takes f7 is losing the bishop e6, obviously, with a pin. Uh, king e f7 is running into rook takes e6, and, you know, a discovered attack on the next move will quickly finish black off then. So that's also a correct solution. In the game, Nakamura played the move knight takes f7, exclamation mark, just destroying the defense of both the bishops. In fact, Ferrugia resigned in this position because all of his defences will be refuted in some way. So let's run through them one by one. Obviously, if white is able to play knight takes d8 and win the queen, then that would be hopeless for black. So if they were to play rook takes f7, we can play knight takes e7, and if queen e7, it will actually transpose a line we saw a moment ago with knight e7, where we saw rook e6 was completely crushing. Uh, if you play bishop f7, then white is now hitting the bishop two times. That's defender only once. So knight e7, king h8. And I guess you see how white wins a piece, where queen takes d8, rook d8, and bishop f7, and white is up a piece as black rook was deflected from the defense. So the main move here would be king takes f7, trying to keep both the bishops safe. And now if you wanted to play the move rook takes b7, well it would still be winning. But the move I think Nakamura intended was the move rook takes c6, just luring that king out into the open. And if they were to play knight d5 then we take back with the bishop and that also defends our rook on e6 after that. But what if they play king takes e6? Obviously the king is out in the open and we have all sorts of discovered checks from the knight. Uh, well, discovered checks from the bishop, uh, rather, after a knight move. But what do you think is the best move for white in this position? So technically there are a lot of strong moves where I think these knight discoveries are also winning. But the one I like best is knight takes f6 where we remove the defender of the knight, a defender of the king in the black knight. After king f6, how do we bring the queen in the attack with tempo? Yeah, well done. We go queen to f3 in this position. And if they were to play king g6, trying to run the king towards the corner, towards safety. Well, how do we keep up the checks then to keep our attack going? Well, it turns out there are many solutions. I think bishop d3 also works. 
But the most clinical appears to be Queen E4, where you know, if the king tries to run, we catch him out with a bishop check. So it can be easy to miss those bishop retreats. And if they try to block with rook f5, well, what would be your move then? Yeah, I realize bishop d3 is showing as an arrow, but when you see a good move, look for an even better one. So, well done if you spotted queen to e6 here, uh, which has the point that if black tries to block the check, he gets mated next move. Uh, with rook f6, queen g4. I don't forget these squares are covered by the bishops. And if bishop f6, well, the rook is not covering f7 anymore. So that means queen f7 is checkmate. And if the king tries to run with king h5, then... Well, there are many mating sequences, but one example is bishop e2. Again, this check to keep the king running with tempo. King h4, g3, king h3 and queen f5 checkmate. It's not that difficult to line to calculate, even though it's a long one, because every move is with check by white, and black doesn't have many options in reply in each case. So as far as king hunts go, this one is quite, uh, quite uh, calculable as such. Now, what if they run their king to the center with king e5? Well, if this was king of the hill, then, you know, the whites, then black would have won. But, of course, here, white can play some checks to ensure the black king runs out of room. Uh, I think it's quite important to play queen g3 check. I think if queen e3, you might allow the black king to run toward the queen side. So, queen g3 cuts that out. And I think... King f5 is probably the most tenacious because, well, if you play king f6, then I guess you see the mate in one, right? So queen g5 would be checkmate uh, in this case. You can see all key squares are covered. If uh, king to d4 is played instead, then we should have force mate by playing the right uh, set of checks. Uh, I'm just thinking which would be the most efficient. Well, in the worst case, we can play queen d3. And okay, I was about to suggest queen e3, but as the king might be running away then. So I think we can do better than this. Where I think that uh, queen to g4 will be a, a better way to checkmate. Say if they play king e5, then we force mate with, say, queen to e6, king d4, and then bishop b2 is checkmate. Whereas, if you were to play king c3, then, well, in a king's position like this, you feel it must be a mate for sure. And I'm probably missing a faster mate here. I calculate that rook b3 is forced mate, and I'm thinking if bishop b2 is even a, a faster checkmate. But that might let the king run away. So I'll go with the line I saw in uh, rook b3. King takes c2 as the only move. And, again, maybe this isn't the fastest mate, but I can say that queen to uh, e2 will indeed force mate because of king c1, rook c3, king b1, and after queen c2, the king gets mate in the corner with uh, queen c1 mate. It's always fun when you manage to chase that king all the way to your side of the board, right? Like in the famous Edward Lasker combination. Queen takes h7, if you remember that. Well, what if they play in this position? Instead of putting the king on a dark square, what if they put on a light square with king f5? Well, then again, we can give a diagonal check, since those checks are a bit harder to block for black here. To so go queen h3, and you know, black will play king g6, I think, since obviously king e4 is running into... Well, in this case, queen e3, king f5, and I'll give you a chance to play the mating move for white. Yeah, well done. Queen e6 is checkmate. So back here, black might go quick king g6. And okay, another puzzle for you. Do you see how white can force checkmate from this position? So the answer is that we can play... Well, we can play queen e6. It's actually the same position we saw before, but 
with the rook on f8 instead of f5, which doesn't actually change all that much. Um, king h5 can still be met with bishop e2. Rook f6 is still met with queen g4 mates. The difference is that after bishop f6, you don't have queen f7 mates, as you did with the rook on f5. But white can force mate in two in another way. Uh, do you see the mate in two for white here? Yeah, well done. It is queen to e4. Only legal move is king h5. And then we have a familiar checkmate, bishop e2. So that is Nakamura's combination fully explained. So you can see then how you can play similar combinations and king hunt in your own games. The more you see these patterns, the better you'll get spotting them yourself. And also winning in style or with panache as you might like to say. So if you enjoyed this video, if you found this video useful, please leave a like below. Uh, smash that subscribe button to keep up with more of my content. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video, Chess Improver. Have a good one.